My name is Christy Robbins, and this is my story of hope. I have three children, and um, my son, Brent, is the youngest. And um, when he was 13, he was caught uh, smoking marijuana. I was, of course, you know, very upset as a parent. As a mother, you would do anything for your child. And I grew up in a, a very dysfunctional family. My, my brother was a drug addict, and so my childhood was hard. And I was so determined that I would do everything right as a mother. And this would not happen to my child. I was determined to fix it. Of course, he was in trouble. He was grounded. And I would go out on the street and try to find the drug dealers and confront them and threaten them. I went out and I grabbed one around his his shirt, got in his face, and I threatened him. And he was just a kid, you know, just a teenager. And I remember all of that was popping off his shirt. So I was that strong. And I told him if he ever sold drugs to my kid, I would find him and I would kill him. And it was in the street and a neighbor came out and she said, well, ma'am, you're, you can't, you know, you're hurting him. And my son told me, mom, mom, you can't do that. We're going to have a drive by at our house. And I said, well, if we have a drive by at our house, they better kill me with the first bullet because I'm going to pull the bumper off the car and beat him to death. That's how consumed I was with not letting this happen. And that's when I realized I, I was losing control and I was no longer in control. I became very, very depressed and um, I was suicidal at one point and I had a plan. Thank goodness that um, God intervened and sent me a dream that somebody pulled me out of the water and saved me and I was on a respirator because I was had brain injury and I thought I can't I can't do that so um, I did seek out help get therapy and uh, for myself uh, I looked into programs for my son but the addiction kept on and it worsened uh, my son became a nurse I thought he was doing better um, drug addicts are really good at, at hiding things and even though I was a nurse, I really believed that he was doing better. And he overdosed at work. Um, he injected uh, medicine to his vein, and he coded, and um, he was in ICU. And I was so angry and, and upset that it took three days for me to go and see him in ICU. And when I did, I sat beside the bed and and he was awake at that time. He had been on a ventilator. And I said, Brent, I need to know what kind of funeral you want. Because I know that you're going to die. And I just have to accept that. I said, in my mind, I've put you in a blanket and I handed you to God. <laughs> that gave me comfort just to wrap him in a blanket. And I gave him up to God a couple of years after that. He, he wanted to save his license. And so the nursing program has a, they have a program for addiction and alcoholism. And he was in that program. And I would pray, God, God, please, please don't let him lose his license. If he loses his license, what is he going to do? He'll, he'll be on the street. But he made it through the program. He moved to Dallas and he started working there with, with recovering addicts and recovering alcoholics and created a music therapy group. And he was so loved and so, he made such a difference uh, in so many people's lives. But he came down to visit and we were eating at a local restaurant here in College Station. And he got up and he followed the waiter into the restroom. And he came back and I said, Brent, what, what's, what's wrong, what's going on? And he said, Mom, the server was addicted to meth and cocaine and that he could tell by looking at him, he can tell, and that he gave him his phone number and offered help. And that's just Brent, that's what he does. So he, anywhere, anytime, he is there to help. He gives all of his recovery to God. He's been sober now, clean for 10 years. Uh, he has his master's degree. I'm so proud of him. I love him so much. I realize now that that was God's plan all along. And 
I couldn't see it. And to break the cycle of addiction is so hard. But I never gave up hope. And I never gave up prayer. And I never gave up on God. There's always another way. There's always another way. You can't see it right now. But there's help. And there's hope. God does have a plan. I truly believe that. And that's my story of hope.